Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we want to glorify your name. We magnify your name. We want to thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. Thank you, Father, for every single person that made the time to come and be with you and allow you, Father, to take us by the hand and make us cross over from 2017 to 2018. Holy Spirit, we ask you to have your way. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed already? Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, we want to bless and everyone who is here this evening. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord. I see we have our pastor from Zimbabwe with us this evening. Just wave your hand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Isn't God wonderful? Praise the Lord. You know, I have a short message that I just want to share with us. Our time is running faster than we thought, but we are going to pray in 2018. But before we do that, I just want to share what the Lord has placed in my heart. Amen. You know, for a few weeks now, when I've been just waiting on the Lord, meditating on the Lord, something began to bother my spirit and it just I couldn't shake it off. And that is seven times. Just that, seven times. Seven times. Seven times. And I said, God, what is it about seven times? Do you know how many times you read about seven times in the Bible? So many instances. I looked at how Israel walked around the walls of Jericho seven times. How Naaman had to go and wash in the river seven times. And how Jesus said, forgive seven times and then 77 times, seven times. You know, there's so many of these instances where God is talking about seven times, seven times, seven times. And I said, God, I want to know, there's got to be a principle around seven times. There's got to be a reason for seven times. Do you know that number seven in the Bible, it identifies completeness. Complete, divine, finished, divine perfection, finished. So every time they hit number seven, you hit divine completion. It is finished, it is completed, it is done. God created the world in six days. The seventh day was a perfect day. Everything was completed. The work was done. He entered into his rest. So the seventh time, that's when victory comes. When I began to meditate on that, you know, I was thinking about this coming 2018. God, where are you taking us? Where do you want us to go? And seven times came again. God, what is this seven times got to do with where we are going in 2017? Then God took me to the story of Elijah. You know, the Bible says Elijah was a man like you and me. And yet Elijah prayed earnestly that it should not rain for the space of what? Ah, I wanted to hear how many people know their Bible. For the space of three years. And it did not rain for that time. Then Elijah comes again after the three years is up 
And he prays again that God should bring abundance of rain. You know, when I was meditating on this abundance, three years of drought, total drought, devastation, everything dried up, dead, gone wrong. And now Elijah is praying, God, bring the rains, abundant rain. And the Holy Spirit right there dropped in my spirit. There are some of us right here tonight. You've had three or more years of drought in your life where everything appeared dead. Everything you tried to hold on died. Nothing was working out. And you looked and say, the past few years have been hard years for me. The past few years have been hard years. Maybe you've looked, you've even said in your heart, God, I've lost three or four or five years of my life, wasted years of my life. I don't know what happened to those years, but they've been wasted. And the Lord is saying to those people, God is saying, you know, when God restores, he restores in abundance. He restores what the kinkawem has eaten. He restores what the pamawem has eaten. He restores the years that you lost. When he gives back, he gives back ten times more than what you lost. So God is saying that to somebody here this evening. If it's yours, then receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'll read for the sake of those who don't know their Bibles. I'll read 1 Kings chapter 18. I'll read verse 41 to verse 46 and then I'll tell you what the Lord is saying. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink. For there is a sound of abundance of rain. Just hang on to the sound. There is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. And he cast himself down upon the earth put his face between his knees and he said to his servant, go up now, look towards the sea. And he went up and looked and he said, there is nothing. And he said, go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab roared and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he carried up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Hallelujah. An amazing Amazing scripture. First of all, Elijah says there is a sound of abundance of rain. Ahab was sitting right there. He never heard the sound. Elijah heard the sound of abundance of rain. How do you hear the sound of abundance of rain when it's not raining, when there's been a drought for the past three years? You see, Elijah was a man like you and I, but Elijah was a man of faith. When he prayed that the rain should not come down for three years, he believed and it did not rain for three years. And now he is saying, God, bring the rain down in abundance 
There is no question in his heart. There is no doubt whatsoever in his heart. Even as he speaks the word, he's already hearing the sound of abundance of rain. The sound of abundance of rain. So he gives instruction, go and tell Ahab, he must go and eat quickly and drink and get ready. For the rain is coming down. You wonder, Ahab doesn't say, are you mad? We haven't had rains for so long. There is not a cloud in the sky. How can you say there's abundance of rain? When there's not even a single cloud in the sky. And he says, get ready. Go home quickly. There's rain coming when there's no rain. But the thing that I want us to see is the seven times. Elijah says to the man, go and look out. And the guy comes back, he says, the sky is blue. There is no sign of any rain. How many times has God spoken a prophetic word to you or to us combined and we looked and there was no sign. Pastor just said in a lot of prophetic words over this church, but we haven't seen them yet. There is no sign. And some of us say, well, the sky is blue. There is no sign of any rain coming. This man is gone crazy. This is a false prophet. But he says, go again. The man goes back. He says, well, I don't know what you are expecting. There is no change. <laughs> you know, sometimes when you pray for people, when they are sick, you pray for them. You put all your faith into it. And they say, I'm still feeling the same. Nothing's changed. There's no change. And then you get intimidated, isn't it? Your faith begins to go down. Then you come back. Your prayer is not as powerful as the first time. You start to pray a little bit softer. How are you feeling now? No change. There is no change. That's what the men say. I've been and I've looked all over. The sky is blue. The sun is hot. There is no sign of any rain. Go again. He goes. Now he's saying, this man is mad. He looks around. There is nothing. Go again. And the seventh time, the man comes back. He says, well, if it makes you feel better, there's a little cloud rising up as small as my fist. That's all there is out there. But that's all Elijah needed to hear. You see, God is saying, most of us do not see miracles because we ignore the little signs. You know, God shows little signs to give you hope, to give you more strength, to believe for bigger things. But you look at the little sign, you despise the day of small beginnings. You despise the little things that God is doing in your life. And that's why you do not see the big things. There is a little cloud. It is as big as my fist. But to Elijah, that was all he needed. A little sign to show that God is working. A little sign to show the rain is starting to brew up in the sky. And he says, that's all I need to hear. Now go and tell King Ahab to get ready for there's abundance of rain that is coming. Church, I want you to hear we are entering into 2018 and God is saying we are going to have to 
seven times people. We are going to have to walk and seven times people and be the kind of people that won't give up the first time, that won't give up the second time, that won't give up the third time, that won't give up the fourth time, that won't give up the fifth time, that won't give up the sixth time, but that are going to go all the way. Remember, God already spoke to us, hallelujah, about seven times. Is it two weeks ago that Brother Mike preached and he talked about the king and Elisha. Elisha is dying and Elisha takes the king's hands. He puts it on the bow and he puts an arrow and he says to the king, now shoot. And the king shoots once and he shoots twice and he shoots three times and then he puts the bow down and Elisha is angry. Elisha is very angry. Why is Elisha angry? Because the king did not reach the number seven. He says, why did you stop? Why? Did you stop? You should have gone all the way. Number seven means all the way. You must be the kind of believer that goes all the way. Don't go halfway. Don't go three quarters of a way. Don't go nine tenths of the way. Go all the way. All the way. That's the word for 2018. You must go all the way. Amen. There's no half measures. There's no half measures. Go all the way. And you must keep looking. Watch out for the little feast. Watch out for the little signs. Many times we overlook the little signs that God gives you to show you I am working. A little cloud appeared in the sky. You know, it reminds me, years ago, what happened? That time, I was starting to grow in the prophetic ministry. My husband was still young in the things of God. And God showed me a dream that we we're going to be involved in an accident. And said to my husband and it was you know it was boxing day we're going to Chipangali those of you who are from Zimbabwe if you know Chipangali it's the wildlife orphanage and we were going to be taking the kids there and I said to my husband I saw an accident we shouldn't travel today I saw us May, I didn't see how the accident happened, but as we were driving, I saw a huge lion following behind. Then it was like there was a mist. And when the mist was over, our car was all in pieces and we were inside a bus. This is what I saw. And I said to my husband, let us not travel today. He says, no, you just don't want to go anyway. You are making excuses. So we got in the car. It, it, we got into my car. I had a little VW Beetle. How many of us know those little ones? The children were all tiny. And they used to love to go in the back, you know, where you put the groceries. And sit there, three of them lined up, you know, in that little boot. And... So that day, the children didn't sit in that little boot. Two of them sat at the back with my husband's young brother, and one was sitting in the front on my lap, and off we went. We didn't go very far. We took a turn towards the airport road, you turn, because we thought we we're going to have lunch by his mom first, then we go. Just when we took a turn, there was a little cloud. This is what reminds me. A little cloud that appeared from nowhere. Then all of a sudden, the raindrops started to come down. 
Then I say, oh my God, it's raining. And he was shocked as well. Before we went further, there was a mist. The whole place turned snow white. You couldn't see in front of you. So he quickly went off the road, parked right off the road, stopped the car. We were sitting in the car waiting for things to clear. Then when I looked back, the lights, there was the bus coming. Then we realized the bus driver wasn't stopping. And he hit our car, parked not even on the road. The car went over to the other side of the road, ended up in a ditch. And then when the mist cleared, the army truck was coming from the other side. They stopped to see if we were okay. The bus driver came running. People came to see. We were all fine, but because the little engine is in the back, it was all squashed. Imagine if the kids had been sitting at the back that day. They would have all of them died. But God said no. Just like I had seen it in my dream. We went home in the bus. The bus driver gave us a lift. Took us home in a, in a lift. We suffered loss that day. And it was these things that brought him to the Lord. It was these things that made him realize that the God that we serve is a God who is alive, is a God who talks, is a God who sees, is a God who warns, is a God who lives. His eyes, they run to and fro the earth watching over the righteous and his ears are always attentive to the cry of the righteous. We lost our car, but we, we didn't lose our lives. Because we didn't listen to God that day. You know why? Because when he looked in the sky, there was no sign of anything happening. And that's where we got a problem. That's where we are all stuck in the issue of faith. Because we look and we don't see anything happening. And then we say to ourselves, there is nothing happening. And the moment you say nothing is happening, you nullify everything that God was beginning to do. This is why God wants you to be a seven times believer so that you go all the way. When you see that little sign, rejoice, rejoice and say, get ready. There is a sign. God is at work. There is a sign that God is, is, is at work. That is why some of us never get healed. Because you are sick and God gives you a little sign that the healing has already taken place. But because physically you cannot see it, you tell yourself, nothing has changed. I am still the same. I don't feel anything. I don't see anything. Excuse me. We walk by faith and not by feeling. We walk by faith and not by sight. When God gives a sign, take that sign, hold on to that sign, and run with that sign. Elijah was a man like you and I. And yet Elijah did great and mighty things for God. How come? Why? How was he able? Because Elijah was a man that was a seven times man. He believed. He believed. Even though the sky was blue. You see one thing about Elijah. He didn't have small faith. He had big faith. I mean, he never asked God for little things. He asked God for amazing things. He says to the 400 prophets, he's standing one out alone in the midst of 400 prophets. And Elijah says, now let's have a contest. Let's have a contest. I want to show you that with God, I am a majority. With God, I am more than a conqueror. With God, I'm a winner. It doesn't matter how many people are on the opposition side. And I appear to be standing alone. But because I know that great is he that stands with me, nothing can shake me. Nothing can shake me. Let's have a contest. And then he says, you go first. 
They do the best they can. Nothing happens. Then he starts to build his own his own uh, altar. You know, Elijah is a man of faith. I can't believe. After he makes the altar, he says what? Pour water. Pour water on the wood. Pour water. They poured so much water, it was running everywhere. And then Elijah, he's got the guts to stand up and say, God, let the fire come down and light the altar. The altar with wet wood, with water dripping from the wood. But the fire came down. That's why up to today we say, where is the God of Elijah? The God who answers by fire. Because the fire came down and it, it even licked all the water that was poured around. And the nation, everybody that was there watching the contest that day, he said, the God of Elijah is the God of heaven. The God of Elijah is the great God. And I want to challenge you for 2018. Let the people know that the God that you serve is alive and well. Let the people know that the God that you serve is a miracle working God. Let the people know that the God that you serve he is the same today, yesterday and forever. If he did miracles yesterday, he can do miracles today. If he sent fire from heaven yesterday, he can send fire today. He can do anything. If he opened the blind eyes to see yesterday, he can open the blind eyes today. Oh, hallelujah. If he opened the Red Sea and allowed Israel to walk on dry ground, he will open a way for you where there seems to be no way. Hallelujah. 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 We are talking about the God of Elijah, the God of fire, the God of miracles. The God that fed him with ravens. The God who sent angels to feed his servant. He's a God. He's a miracle working God. Hallelujah. This is a challenge. James chapter 5, 17 says, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly. That it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Hallelujah. An ordinary man like you and I. But he was able. He prayed again. And the heavens opened. Brought forth abundance of rain. Man that believed in God. He believed in God. And the challenge for you today, many of us are like the king. We shoot a few arrows. We pray a few little prayers. You know, and then we say, God is not answering. God is not working because you didn't go all the way. You didn't shoot enough arrows. Had you shot seven times, you would have overcome all your enemies from every side. You would have had peace like a river, but you chose to shoot three times. You chose to, to, how many of us are facing challenges and you've just been shooting three times? You've just been shooting three times. And then you say, I am tired. Why did you stop? Elisha said, why did you stop? You know why he stopped? There was no anger inside of him. There was no passion inside of him. 
You know when you are angry about something, you're not going to shoot three times. You, you want to crush it until there's nothing left in your anger. You would have been shooting and shooting until when you went, there was no arrow left behind. Bible says the kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violent shall take it by force. What does it mean, violent? It means the seven-time believer. The one who won't stop. The one who is angry with the enemy. The one who is sick and tired of being in that situation. The one who is saying, I've been around this mountain for too long. It's time for a breakthrough. It's time for me to move forward. And you are saying, no, I'm not taking it anymore. I'm not having this anymore. I'm not going to let God go until I get my miracle. I'm going to stand until God does something on my behalf hallelujah those are the people that are going to walk by power those are the people in 2018 who are going to be overcomers those are the people you know why because God wants to see people who are serious about the things of God God wants people who are fed up with the enemy God wants people who are saying enough is enough God wants people who can believe in him that my God can do anything, that my God is able, my God is able, my God is able, my God is able, my God is able. There is nothing too hard for him, nothing impossible, nothing too difficult that my God cannot do. And I'm not going to limit him. I'm not going to stand in the way. I'm going to go all the way. I'm going to faith all the way. I'm going to stand all the way. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter if the sky is blue. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. It doesn't matter if there's no cloud in the sky. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. What is it that you are hearing today? What are you hearing, church? What are you hearing? See, some of us, some of us are hearing the crackling sound of dry leaves. We are hearing the crackling sound of dry sticks. That's why there's no rain. Because you are not expecting rain. You are expecting more dry periods in your life. You are expecting more problems to come to you. And you even say, you must listen to yourself talk sometime. You know, I listen to myself. I sometimes amaze myself. Did that come from me? Because you start saying, I knew it. I just knew it wasn't going to happen. I knew it wasn't going to work. And <laughs> your papers come, your letter come from the home office. In your heart you knew you didn't get it. Because you weren't expecting to get it. And when you opened the letters, I knew they were not going to give me. That's the kind of life we are living in. I knew it wasn't going to work. But you see, Elijah was expecting rain. Elijah wanted rain. Elijah wanted rain so much to prove that God is God. So much to prove that there's no other God but his God. And Elijah says, I hear the sound of rain because that's where his heart was. That's what he wanted to hear. He heard the sound. It was a statement of faith. It was a statement to make others, Ahab and others have faith. He says, I hear the sound of rain. And believe it or not, Ahab believed the rain was coming. He never argued. He went to eat and drink and then he, he got on his chariot to go. But you know the most amazing thing? You know, there's a scripture that I put down. I want you to, to listen to this scripture. I'm finished. Told you my sermon is very short. Jeremiah 12, verse 5. Jeremiah 12, verse 5 says, If thou hast run with a footman, and they have wearied thee. 
Then how can thou contend with horses? And if the land of peace wherein you trust has wearied you, then how will you do, how will you do in the swelling of the Jordan? Hmm. I hope you understand what that verse is saying. You see, Elijah, he got ready. He says, go and tell Ab to get in his chariot and go before the rain blocks him. Ahab is in his chariot with the horses. They are running for dear life. And yet the Bible says, the spirit of the Lord was strong upon Elijah. That Elijah ran and he passed Ahab with his horses. And Elijah got to the city before Ahab got there. It's about time that you begin to run and overtake your enemies. It's about time that you begin to run and overtake your problems. Leave them behind. Don't let them go ahead of you. It's about time you allow the Spirit of the Lord to come mightily upon you. That you go ahead and that you reach the place before your enemies get there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He ran. He ran. If the footmen have made you tired, how can you race with a horseman? How can you fare with a horseman? If you can't even pray for 30 minutes, how are you going to do when you need seven times to pray? How are you going to do it? Wow. I'll give you a few instructions for 2018. Then I'm finished. You know, God wants you to have faith in a prayer answering God. Determine in your heart, 2018, I'm walking by faith. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to listen to the Holy Spirit. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. He heard the sound in the spirit before it came in the physical. You need to hear what the spirit of God is saying. When you have the word from God, when you've heard from the spirit of God, then you have the faith to go forward. Listen. Listen to what the spirit is saying. Thirdly, train yourself to work in unity with the will of God. See, the problem is we do not have a hearing ear. And because we are not hearing the sound, we cannot call the rain to come down. You got to first hear the sound. Then you know the rain is definitely coming. So we train ourselves to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Then we can work together. We say there are lots of prophecies. How many of us have gone on to pray seven times for that prophecy to materialize in the natural realm? We say it our little prayer one time, twice, three times. And then that was it. But you see, 2018 is the year that you've got to be like Elijah. You've got to be like Jacob who wrestled with the Lord and said, I will not let you go until you bless me. You've got to be determined in your spirit, determined in your, in your mind, in your spirit that I am going to shoot my arrows until there's no more arrows left. Don't despise small signs. Always look for a small sign. See, some of us are looking for big, big things. We don't know that big things come from little things. Don't despise small beginnings. You want a business and God says go and sell earrings to all the women you know. And you think, that's not business, Lord. Ah, you want
want to disgrace me selling to those silly women earrings. I mean, how much profit am I going to make from those earrings? Do not despise the small things. When God gives you a little sign, run with that little sign. Out of that little thing will come abundance. Because he is a God of abundance. So do not ignore that little sign, that small sign is an indication that God is doing something. God is doing something. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So be a seven times believer. What does that mean? Don't give up easily. Don't give up easily. You know why Elijah didn't give up easily? Elijah walked with God. He knew that there are times when God takes long to come. He knew that God wants you to wait. That's why he said, they that wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. He knew that you need to wait. You need to be patient. That's why he went seven times. Patience. Long suffering. Be determined to wait on God. When I say wait on God, church, I don't say go to sleep and say, well, I'm waiting on God. No. You wait on God while you are fasting, while you are praying, while you are, you are listening to what God is saying, while you are weeping, you are groaning in your spirit, you are groaning, you are asking, Holy Spirit, Pray with me. Pray through me. That's what it means to wait on God until God says something or until you see the sign. When you see the little sign, then you know God is now at work. God is now at work. Immovable faith. That's what we need to have. For 2018. Faith that cannot be shaken. You know, the devil knows you better than you know yourself. And there are times when the devil is always, he's a schemer, you see. Always looking for ways. Ways to, 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 to block you. Ways to trap you. Ways to trip you. He's looking for ways to sabotage your faith. And sometimes he will make sure things don't work out the way they are supposed to work out. And then he will make you focus on all the negative things that are happening in your life. And then he will begin to whisper into your ears, where is your God now? Where is your God now? If your God was here, why isn't he doing this and why isn't he doing that? What kind of a God is this? You know, and then you, you start to say, yes, devil. You are right, devil. Ah, that's true, devil. Actually, I never thought of it. Thank you, devil. You are correct, devil. That's how we go. When you should be saying, hey, it is written. All these things are working together for my good. The good things and the bad things. God has a purpose in it all. And if God is delaying, God has a purpose why he is delaying. One thing I know for sure is that he has good plans for my life. One thing I know for sure is that he has good thoughts for me. Thoughts to prosper me. Thoughts to give me an expected ending. Therefore, I have no reason to doubt him. No reason to doubt him. I mean, Elijah is alone. <laughs> 400 prophets of Baal. He's just one man. And yet, he had no reason to doubt God's ability to deliver him. At the end of the day, he had all those 400 prophets killed. He had no reason to doubt God. Do not allow doubt in 2018 to rob you of your destiny. Do not allow doubt to cripple your faith, to steal your faith. 
Do not focus on the negative things that are happening. Focus on the positive things that God is doing in your life. You are not where you want to be. You are far from your ideal situation. But you are where you are and God is with you in that environment. And you need to be grateful for that and say, thank you, Lord. I will get to that point in the due season. How many of us know God is a God of seasons? He is a God of timing. You want to be there, but it's not yet the season for you to be in that place. You want to be doing that, but God is saying, wait a minute, not yet. You know, I was blessed when they, there's a story that was in the news. This is the truth. An aeroplane that was hit by terrorists. And this man lost his passport. It was stolen at the airport. So he didn't get on the flight. Can you imagine how angry he was? God. Now, my whole thing is, my journey is messed up. My trip is messed up. I'm in a foreign country. My passport is gone. What am I going to do? He was angry. But when the news came that that plane was destroyed and not even one survivor, I can see that man falling down on his face saying, God, you are God. You know better than me. There are times when we do not appreciate delay. We do not appreciate why God is blocking us. We do not appreciate why God is not doing things when we want him to do things. But you need to constantly remind yourself, God knows better than you. Everything he does is for your good. I'm glad that the sister testified and said, I didn't see. I said, Lord, where are the miracles? Where are the miracles? It reminds me of Gideon saying, me, mighty man of Vela, where are the miracles that our forefathers told us about? You see, the miracles have been happening the whole year through, but they were too small for you to take them into account. And that's why you didn't get anything bigger. Because you did not take advantage of the little signs that God gave you. You know you are praying. You know you hear people saying, I've been fasting 21 days and praying. And then you say, and <laughs> nothing. Well, what is the Lord saying? Uh, <laughs> You know what is the problem? God is always talking. The problem is you are deaf. He was talking. You couldn't hear the sound. You better start praying for a hearing ear. Because God is always talking. And if only you had heard what God was saying, you would have saved yourself from many tears and much sorrow. But because you didn't hear, Despite the 21 days of fasting, you still went ahead and done your own thing. And then in the end you say, but I fasted and I prayed. Why didn't God do something? And God says, I tried. I tried, but you were not listening. I even tried to block you, but you took another turn. I tried to stop you, you found a way. I blocked the door, you bulldozed it down. Let us stand. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we just want to honor you tonight. We want to thank you that you are a never-changing God. You are a God who's not moved, my God, by circumstances. You are a God who's never taken by surprise. You know everything before it happens. Father, you see everything before it takes place. It is the cry of our heart, Lord. We are praying that as we step into 2018, you will grant us hearing ears, Lord. You grant us seeing eyes, Father, that we may hear 
the sound of heaven that we may hear what the spirit says to the churches and that father we may have willing hearts lord to submit to your will and to do that which you are telling us to do mighty god help us lord to walk by faith and not walk by sight in 2018 hallelujah 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 oh glory to god thank you lord thank you lord